Okay. Hello and welcome to the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley's program. Every week we bring to you a new program regarding innovation, technology, education, and humanitarian service. Um, my name is Mitty Cheng. I'm the president of this Rotary E-Club. It's my pleasure to introduce to you some of our guests and members on the call and then introduce to you our guest speaker for this week. Uh, and to my left, as I see it, um, we have Yvonne Kwan. Uh, Yvonne, go ahead and wave. She is one of our charter members and also um, board directors. Uh, Yvonne's an educator in California. Underneath Yvonne, we have Ken Oku, one of our newest members. Ken, go ahead and give everyone a wave. Ken is currently studying computer science at Ohlone College in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, next to Ken, we have Chris. Chris is uh, one of our charter members on our board as well, and also is in TV production, and he's a director as well. Chris is an amazing guy as well, and also a Canadian. Um, next to Chris, we have Brett. Brett, we currently don't have a video feed for, but he is listening in. He is our Australian friend on the call, um, a former Rotaractor and um, soon to be uh, Rotarian. So Brett is from Sydney, Australia. Underneath Brett, we have Wolf. Wolf is a district governor in District 5130, I believe, uh, which is in the Northern California area, Northwest California parts. Um, Wolf, you just want to wave at everyone really quickly. Wolf's currently sitting in his car. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. And of course, I'd like to introduce to you our VIP, our guest for this program. His name is Jeffrey Brown. Jeffrey is a director and he is an Academy Emmy and Peabody Award winner. Sold is his directional feature film debut. Jeffrey went to NYU Film School and was awarded an AFI fellowship to intern with Peter Ware on Dead Poet Society. He has directed many TV shows, including LA Law, The Wonder Years, and numerous other shows. Jeffrey co-wrote and co-produced Pontanic Moon with Ted Danson and Mary Steenbergen, and Dream with the Fishes with David Arquette. Now with Sold, starring an amazing cast featuring Gillian Anderson, David Arquette, and many award-winning actors from India, Jeffrey wants to make a difference in the lives of the many child trafficking survivors he's met in India and Nepal while doing research, adapting Sold from the award-winning novel by Patricia McCormick. And we're gonna start this off with the trailer to Sold, and then I'll turn it over to Jeffrey. Um, so, I'm going to be sharing my screen with you all. And here we are. You're very well in the city. Welcome to Happiness House. Give yourself fully. That's how a goddess serves a god. From now on, sweetheart, you will do what men tell you and smile while you do it till all your debt is cleared. Now, after five years, I'm going back home. Five years? I just can't get her out of my head. When you raid this brothel, I want to be there.
here. Wow, definitely a powerful piece. Jeffrey, if you'd like to take it away. Sure. Well, so um, the trailer gives you a little bit of an idea of the tone of the film. Um, it's an adaptation of the novel by Patricia McCormick, uh, which has been translated into like 32 languages uh, and has been read by young readers all over the world. Uh, it was nominated for a National Book Award. And, uh, you know, I just read this book and optioned it literally the next day. Um, I was so deeply moved. It was exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for um, a book that could be used as a vehicle for change on human trafficking. And um, Jane Charles, the producer, and I have been working on this movie for a very long time at this point. It's been a 10-year project. Um, and uh, we're really grateful for, you know, uh, all of the attention it's received. It's won a lot of wonderful awards, three audience awards, a jury award. It's been shown in, like, um, I think, 27 film festivals. Um, and now it's been in theaters uh, all over the U.S. And, uh, and now, you know, we can, uh, we're partnered with Tug. So if you go to our website, soldthemovie.com, uh, you can request a screening. And, you know, we're on a mission to end child trafficking. And everyone can be part of this mission by bringing Soul to your community and using it as an awareness and fundraiser. Uh, where if you go to our website, you'll see all of our partners. We have um, major partnerships uh, with lots of incredible organizations doing phenomenal work uh, to protect children through education. Uh, if you educate a kid until they're 16 years old, uh, their chances of getting traffic drop 80%. Um, that's a global statistic. Um, but the sad reality is that, you know, the, the International Labor Organization says that Every year, uh, each and every year, 5.5 million children are sold into slavery. Uh, that's sexual slavery and labor slavery. So we've got a big job ahead of us, and that's why I'm so thrilled to talk to Rotarians, because Rotarians don't just sit around twiddling their thumbs. They actually get together and do things. They do projects all over the world. They've done phenomenal uh, work ending polio. Um, they built uh, schools. They built all kinds of things all over the world to help kids and, and vulnerable people. And so I'm particularly thrilled to be talking to Rotarians uh, today. So thanks for having me on the show, Mitty, because you, you people are people of action. And that's what I uh, want to get the films in the hands of, because you can bring this to your community, to your Rotary Club, to your Rotaract Club. We have actually two versions of the film. Uh, a 50-minute uh, PG-13 version for high schools uh, and corporate settings and churches. And then we have the full-length version, which is unrated, uh, but it's appropriate for 15 and up. I wouldn't show the full length to anyone younger than 15 because it's, it's pretty intense. Um, it's a very intense subject, but we deal uh, with the subject with a lot of humanity and tenderness, and you really come to care for the characters and... There is a happy ending. I'm not going to give you a scene spoiler, but um, it does kind of leave you with this question, what can I as an individual do? And just to like give you a concrete answer, Kitty Hugh, who's a Rotaract member, maybe some of you know her, she personally got together uh, some huge number of Rotaract members. I think it was like something like 50,000 young people. Uh, they raised 150,000 and gave it to four different organizations that fight trafficking. So that's what one person who's really motivated can do, and uh, she's an inspiration to me. Um, you know, and so what we hope is that uh, people in different clubs uh, all over the world will use this film, they'll discuss with their members where do we want the donations to go, look on our website, we have lots of worthy organizations. Um, you know, there's a great need to help vulnerable kids. Uh, you know, all over the world and, uh, and in the U.S. as well. You know, like uh, almost um, the, the estimates in the U.S. are 100 to 300,000 American children are trafficked every year. Um, in India, the estimate is about a million kids every year into sexual slavery. So, you know, these are estimates. No one really knows the, the real numbers, um, but, uh, you know, it's too high. We're, we're talking about millions of, of very young children 
forced into both sex slavery and labor slavery. So that's, um, you know, so that's the kind of overall picture. And um, the way it works on our website is when you click request a screening, there's an organization we're affiligated with called TUG, T-U-G-G. And you just go in to request a screening. It asks you for your zip code. It'll offer you three theaters. Um, you can book it in a theater, and then there's no screening fee up front. It's just the cost of one movie ticket. But you want to get four or five people to help you build the screening together uh, because then you can all reach out to your networks and bring people together. Um, that's what the amazing thing is today, you know, through all of our social media, uh, all of us have the power to connect, you know, the connectivity. I, on this call, we have people in an airport and in, in, in Canada, you know, and, and so this is something that's never really happened before. It's only in the last 10 years or so that we've had this ability to, you know, reach out and, and reach thousands of people. And so we're really counting on the audience of this film to spread the word and use the film. And so far, we've raised uh, literally millions of dollars um, through the film for organizations in Seattle from some of our investors who got together. Uh, we've organized, uh, one of our partners is, is called Child Reach Nepal uh, and Child Reach International. Uh, They're going to build 200 school classrooms, rebuild classrooms in Nepal. The earthquake destroyed like 32,000 classrooms, leaving over a million kids without a school. Um, so they're using it to just build schools, especially in the areas where trafficking happens the most. Uh, another organization we're partnered with uh, it's called the Art of Living Foundation. Uh, they, have, um, they have a Care for Children initiative. Um, they've built something called Project Udon. Uh, it's a safe house for the children of sex workers to get them out of the brothels before they get forced into doing what their moms do at age 12 or 13. Uh, they're going to use our film to build 10 more of these centers. They're going to raise 3 million using the film globally in like 156 countries. So, you know, we're, this is the kind of thing we're catalyzing and we're really thrilled to be part of real change. And, uh, you know, uh, we want to any way we can stand for these kids uh, and protect them with the film and help kids avoid this entirely through education or help the kids who have been trafficked. Uh, get vocational training, get healing so that they can live free uh, of fear and have, uh, you know, dignified life that, you know, we're, we're going all over the place to, you know, find partners and do as much as we can now that we've got the film in our hands. Awesome. Um, Jeffrey, so that was terrific. Thank you so much for sharing with us a little bit about the film. Um, for those of you on the call, if you have a question, you can go ahead and raise your hand. Um, I'm going to kick this off. Um, Jeffrey, so I did see one of your screenings um, in San Jose. It was the one that Kitty actually put on. So um, that was amazing. And I, I have a question for you. Um, if you could just share with us a little bit more about some of the, the research that went in when you were in Nepal and um, I assume also in India, um, kind of researching for the film itself. Yeah, so we went to seven NGOs. We followed a lot of the NGOs that Patricia McCormick went to herself when she was researching the book. Uh, the book is based on true stories told to her by three girls. It's primarily one girl's story. Um, but I wanted to get a feel for the issue. So I, we actually went to seven NGOs. Um, I interviewed hundreds of survivors. Uh, most of them were staff. Uh, the girls who were young, we didn't interview. You don't like really ask them about their past. You ask them about what are their dreams for their future. But just being with them and uh, seeing the um, tenacity, the resilience, the hope uh, after going through something like this, you know, I mean, we're talking about girls who are 14 or 15 years old who have been raped uh, every night, seven days a week for, uh, by 10 to 20 men. Um, and, you know, they're still able to um, want to have a future and want to get free and build a good life. You know, the, the human soul is uh, astounding in its recuperative powers, but these kids do need help. They need vocational training. They need educations. Uh, they need healing, uh, PTSD healing. A lot of them have PTSD. A lot of them have HIV or AIDS. Uh, one of the 
terrible things that happens to young kids is they're sold for a higher price as a virgin and then they're stitched up and sold as a virgin again. Uh, so that can happen to a young girl like 10 times uh, with a brothel pretending that they're virgins. Um, and that makes them very vulnerable to HIV and AIDS, uh, which is, you know, you see it on all the trafficking routes. Uh, they're trucking routes all over the world where AIDS spreads and HIV spreads. So, you know, it's, it's a horrific fate. And uh, you're very fortunate if you get out of being trafficked alive. Uh, the life cycle is usually five to seven years um, before, um, you know, something terrible happens to them. Definitely a powerful story. Chris, you have a question? Yeah, just let me unmute here. Two-part question, Jeff. Biggest surprise, best surprise when you made the film, and the other end, biggest disappointment? Hmm. Um, well, the biggest surprise uh, is, you know, that, uh, you know, our, our hearts really are dedicated to helping these kids, and the biggest surprise is that we really are catalyzing real things in a massive way, and that's gonna keep spreading. Um, biggest disappointment, um, I made it as a for-profit film, uh, and I was hoping my investors would recoup uh, some of their money or all of their money, and um, they won't. <laughs> you know, that's the sad news, but um, luckily most of them um, are very committed, as we are, to helping these kids. Many of them actually came to India with us, uh, and then they went back to Seattle, uh, where many of them are based, and these are mostly women. It's a circle of women in Seattle. And they started something called StolenYouth.org um, because they realized in Seattle there's a major problem. And they've uh, now raised over $3 million to help four uh, nonprofits on the ground in Seattle. And they've changed the laws in Seattle. And we want to bring that sort of um, paradigm to, to the most traffic cities in the U.S. Like we'd like to get to the 10 most traffic cities. On our website, we have something called Circles of Change, which sort of uh, talks about that story of stolen youth and how you can create a stolen youth where you live if there's a trafficking issue where you live. And if it's a major city, especially if it's a coastal city, um, you, you, there is a major problem in your city, just by definition. If there's airports and coastal access, um, people are getting trafficked in and out of that city. Yeah, I would imagine where I am would be Vancouver. Uh, I live in Toronto, so yes. probably there. And currently, I'm just near Montreal. But, I mean, I, do you have any source for finding out what the Canadian stats might be? Or would you just extrapolate and say probably 10% of the U.S.? Or how I, would you do that? I don't know much about Canada, but... Um, Polaris uh, has mapped out, polarisproject.org has mapped out the U.S., every single city. And in most cities, there's an anti-trafficking task force. Um, so if you look in your city for the anti-trafficking -tra task force, you'll find the network of agencies that are involved. Uh, also, if you just write, um, you know, uh, organ uh, NGOs or organizations helping victims of trafficking, you'll be able to figure it out pretty quickly. And then you want to know if the work is, is, is being done well in the organization. You want to be judicious and not support anybody or everybody. You want to find out if it's a good, good organization. So you can vet organizations, uh, their, their internet um, you know, we, we're going to have a downloadable, uh, it's finished, but it's not up on our website yet. It's called a mobilization a PDF. Um, and, you know, under, under sort of our take action button in, on soldthemovie.com. And that mobilization packet will uh, tell you how to assess uh, NGOs and see if they're, if they're worthy of your support. One of the things that's amazing that's happening by Rotarians in Seattle is that um, there's a very big Rotarian community there. And they're actually raising, I, I don't remember the amount, but it's over a million dollars to build a facility uh, for kids who've been rescued from trafficking to recuperate in. And this is a, a systemic need across the U.S. There's not, not really dedicated places for kids who have been rescued from the streets. So typically a cop will arrest a kid, find out they're underage, and all they can do is send them to juvie, uh, where they're going to meet even more uh, hardened criminals than them. Um, and it's just a vicious cycle because now the the girl who is a victim has a, um, a felony offense against her, you know, so this is starting to change. 
uh, and it will be changing and it's something we need to accelerate uh, because these are victims, you know, these are children. By definition, anyone under 18 is a victim of human trafficking. So Mehdi, I would just say as a club, we ought to sit down and talk about what we can do as a club to help him not only get the word out, but perhaps get funds into this situation as well. Thank you, Jeff, yeah. really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it, any way we can help these kids. Um, that's what we're that's what we're trying to do and accomplish. Uh, you know, the need in in Nepal is very great. In India, it's also very great. And chances are, if you're in a major city, San Jose has a major trafficking issue. I didn't even know oh, that. Um, really? You know, because uh, you you've got all these IT people from all over the world who are there alone in a foreign country, um, and they're being serviced by. Um, you know, women who are being brought in from different countries, from South America, from China, you know, um, I didn't know that until our film opened at the, you know, uh, uh, CineQuest Film Festival and some, someone was telling, who's from there and an IT guy was telling me uh, what a pro prolific issue it is there. So I was very surprised. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a huge points I hit home. Um, yeah, the, the San Francisco Bay Area, definitely one of the uh, major trafficking centers in the U.S. Um, and so, so Jeffrey, um, actually following up with... Oakland, Chris, Oakland just had a terrible thing happen. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there are like 10 police officers who are part of the vice squad who were all um, having sex with a 14-year-old girl who was being prostituted uh, to keep them silent and to inform her pimp when, you know, when they were trawling for arrests. Uh, that happened about two months ago. <laughs> You know, that's like, I don't know, not, it's 20 minutes, half an hour from where I live. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's a, it's an eye opener when you realize how close to home it really is. Yeah. Um, Jeffrey, have you guys ever done a online screening of Seoul? No, uh, there's a community that wants to, they have, um, I think 700,000, um, people involved in this community and we're contemplating it. We, the, the issue is we do want to have people in the same place uh, because, you know, um, Mark, one of my favorite quotes is a Margaret Mead quote, which is never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Um, I really feel like when people are, you know, together, they can, they can act together. Um, so what I encourage this virtual a Rotarian group to do is to bring it to your, you know, to your core group, wherever you are and build on that. Uh, because there's a power in people gathering together, I think. Um, there is also a power in people working together virtually. Uh, and I'm doing that more and more in my own life with like the music of the film was created by someone in Hong Kong, someone in, uh, you know, LA, uh, people in um, New York, you know, so there was all this like, collaboration that was uh, totally virtual. Um, so uh, we're not totally opposed to that. What we're, what we're doing is there's a sequence when you distribute a film. So right now it's still in the theaters. Um, next phase will be um, bringing it to other countries. Uh, but ultimately, you know, um, like by next year, early next year, it'll be on Netflix, iTunes, you know, and then, then anyone could do a virtual screening to raise funds and gather people to watch it. Um, you know, so that then it will be accessible to that. Terrific. And so you, you may have just answered my uh, follow-up question. That was going to be, we do have uh, members abroad. So, you know, Chris is from Canada. We also have members in South Africa and Japan um, and other parts of the world. Um, so my follow-up question was going to be, if one of those members wanted to have a screening in their areas, are there specific countries you currently only provide screenings to or um, is that going to be possible for them to do one? Um, it, it will absolutely be possible to do it all over the world. Um, it will. Um, so currently we're partnered with Tug, which is a theatrical on demand model. Um, they're in the U S and a couple other countries, but um, we're also our distributors, Roco films are for the educational shorter version of the film. And, um, and then it will be on iTunes and Netflix. And I think, those would, that would be the way to get it. And you, you know, it'll also be downloadable on Amazon ultimately, um, you know, and all the other Hulu, you know, all the other um, myriad of, of, uh, of, of ways you can get films. Um, but we're trying to sequence this so that we build 
a following everywhere. Like we want to, um, like Jane, my producer, is going to Calgary, actually. There's a convention to protect children up there uh, next week. Uh, and uh, there's 1,500 people coming from all over the world. These are people that run NGOs uh, all over the world to protect kids. And obviously, trafficking is one of the issues. So that's the kind of work we're doing now. It's kind of laying the groundwork so people know about it. Um, but a virtual community like yours is a great way to, um, you know, get spread the word as well. Terrific. Well, uh, if there are no other questions, uh, that might be my cue for, to turn to you, Jeffrey, for some closing statements. Um, maybe talk about some other ways that people can get involved. And of course, we'll um, I'll close afterwards and we'll have links to your website underneath the video as well. Thank you. Well, um, so I would say that where we are with human trafficking is sort of where we were with domestic violence about 50 years ago. Uh, there's been a tremendous amount of work on domestic violence, uh, and uh, there's a lot more awareness on how to identify it, what to do, um, all kinds of agencies in place to help. Uh, so women are much less vulnerable to domestic violence and children. Um, today than they were 50 years ago. And I, I think that's what's gonna happen with trafficking. Um, and um, you know, our film uh, was really crafted uh, at, to be a vehicle of change, a tool for change, both by spreading awareness uh, and raising funds. And why it does that is because it puts you in the shoes of a 13 year old girl who's trafficked, which is the global average age of trafficked girls uh, everywhere. And um, so, you know, watch the film, uh, bring it to your community, uh, gather uh, together and figure out what action you want to do. Download our mobilization packet. If you're in a school, uh, our educational distributor, Roco Films, will have an educational guide that goes with the films and give, uh, will give teachers prompts on how to use the film educationally. You know, we really want to empower uh, young leaders, uh, especially teens, college age, um, to engage because they're, they're going to inherit all of this. And uh, the more they realize their power, uh, their collective power through social media, uh, the more change they can create. Um, so that was also a real inspiration. So go to soldthemovie.com. There's a lot on there. Explore the website uh, and get educated and become part of the freedom movement, become part of the collective a consciousness that's going to shed light on this darkness. Light, uh, the darkness is never going to go to the light. The light has to go to the darkness. And so we're counting on you to dare to be the light. Join us, get involved, and bring the film to your uh, community. And thanks so much. We really appreciate Rotarians and all they do and, and Road Rack members. It's such a powerful global community. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. That was amazing. Um, Mm -hmm. the, the claps uh, really quick uh, we do have one last question from Wolf I'm going to turn it over to Wolf and then we'll go ahead and end Wolf yeah so uh, thank you uh, the question I have for Jeffrey is I'm planning a uh, district peace conference sometime next spring and it's going to be up in probably the Santa Rosa ish area wondering if uh, you know over the next few months maybe we can make arrangements to have you somehow be part of that uh, when once we finalize it? Because our district is getting involved more with the whole trafficking issue since we have the Highway 101 corridor go through, and we know that trafficking is a, an issue in all of our communities. Wondering if you might be available for something like that. Well, I live in Mill Valley. Uh, that's pretty close to Santa Rosa, right? Yeah, you're right there. Yep. Yeah. So let's do a screening. Okay. I'll I'll see if I can uh, include you once we once we finalize our venue and and schedule we'll see if we can uh, work you in i think it would be uh, very beneficial for our our district to see that i went to a peace conference a rotarian peace conference down in southern california and that's where i first met rotary members and i was right. just blown away by all the amazing things that uh, rotarians are accomplishing so i'd love to go to another one yeah that was the, the one in ontario in january yeah exactly yeah yeah i was there too and that obviously I've got several Rotarians who were down there who have now taken this uh, human trafficking as, as one of the issues for uh, the, the peace and conflict resolution portion of Rotary. 
and are running with it. And I'm trying to support that. So I think you'd be a good addition to that. You know, Dave McCleary. Yeah. Yeah. He's been a real proponent. And uh, I know that um, Gary Haugen is going to be doing the keynote uh, at the, or did the keynote at the Rotarian um, uh, conference in Seoul. Uh, right. so I'm really glad that uh, anti-trafficking work is is really becoming part of what Rotarians do because it's going to make a huge difference. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, everybody. A real pleasure, Mitty. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much, Jeffrey. Again, um, my guest this week has been Jeffrey Brown uh, with the director of The Sold Film. Thank you guys for joining us this week. Uh, every week we bring to you a program and we hope that you enjoy this week's program. Underneath this video will be links to the sold film as well as links to the trailer um, and ways for you to get involved and also reach out to Jeffrey. Um, thank you again for joining us. We hope to see you next week. Bye everyone. Take care. Thanks,